Welcome to the Pomerantz Mentor presented by ProScan Imaging Education Foundation. And this vignette will continue to cover femoroacetabular impingement and hip and labral pathology. So let's, let's get started right away. Dr. Marius Nygaard Smith Peterson recognized impingement in a 55 year old with intrapelvic protrusion of the acetabulum, one of the variations of impingement. GANS and subsequently Myers popularized and coined the term femoroacetabular impingement or FAI. What is FAI? Well, it's abnormal contact between the femur and the acetabulum. The forces of contact produce excessive compression and shear effect. The process is exacerbated with repetition and a wide range of motion. One easy way to think about it is with hip flexion. When you bring your knee up towards your chin, you're taking your femur and rotating it backwards. You're bringing some of the structures, including the femoral head neck junction and the lower femoral head up and into the joint. If these structures are abnormally formed, they may abnormally shear or contact the joint, especially anterior and superior. The same thing may occur with excessive and repetitive wide ranges of motion of abduction. But this time the forces will be distributed more in the distribution of the direct superior labrum rather than the antero superior labrum. The same can be said for forces of adduction, which will also affect the more superior rather than anterior superior labrum. External rotation demonstrates the shear forces, which are now delivered to the equator of the acetabular fossa, to the mid portion of the femur and the labrum, so that the anterior labrum and the posterior labrum may be more severely affected. External rotation position is characterized by this European footballer or soccer player whose foot is in the external rotation position. The two major types of FAI that have been described include CAM type impingement, so-called type A, in which there is loss of sphericity of the femoral head an insufficiency of the head-neck relationship. In other words, the head should be a nice, smooth, spherical structure and then taper into a thin neck. But when this transition is interrupted by a bump or a broad neck, then the forces that are applied against the acetabulum are excessive in various positions. In type B or pincer type impingement, there's a different problem. Primarily, not exclusively, but primarily, it's an acetabular problem. With the acetabulum often overgrown, the femoral head sucked in, as in protrusio acetabuli. And there are some other acetabular variants that we'll discuss. The spherical shape of the femoral head is relatively preserved. There is no junctional alteration between the head and the neck. The proximal femur abuts the labrum and acetabular rim, especially in the far anterior quadrant, producing great pain in hip flexion. Let's take a dynamic look at FAI1, cam type impingement. At the head neck junction, a bump has formed. When the patient goes into the flexion position, the bump rides from the outside in against the front of the labrum and hyaline cartilage producing an abrasion, an erosion, or a tear. High resolution. There's our bump contacting the labrum and impacting the bone and cartilage. Over time, these shear, they crack, and they break. There is the crack and the chondro osseous separation that develops with the hyaline cartilaginous abrasion that grows and grows over time with repetitive movement. FAI1. Let's take a look at FAI2. In FAI2, the problem is primarily acetabular. We don't see an alteration in the head neck junction. 
but the acetabulum is too big and too deep. So when flexion occurs, it is the anterior acetabulum that comes in contact with the femoral neck, not the neck coming in contact with the acetabulum. There is the large anterior acetabulum. It rakes the neck, the smooth and thin neck of the femur, and eventually this contact affects the labrum. It squishes it. It impacts the bone and produces an abrasion or an erosion underneath the bone. Over time, you may see edema along the femoral neck due to this raking phenomenon. And when the head is pushed back with the overgrowth, you may get a posterior contracoup lesion. The entire circumference of the cartilage may be affected, and the posterior aspect of the joint may be secondarily affected in FAI 2, or pincer impingement syndrome. That's all for today, but we'll be back with more. Thank you.